Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie and welcome to So Many Things. Today we're going to make a relatively basic apron. I've also taken the time and altered the pattern to fit children. So you'll find those pattern pieces down below in the description. So hopefully you'll love this pattern as much as I do. Let's get to it. taken a few minutes prior to starting this video to cut out all my pieces. So here are the pieces you're going to need. You're going to need your pattern pieces. These I got off of Sew for Home under one of their free apron patterns and I will put the link in the description below for this. You'll need your main fabric for the front cut to 33 by 29 inches, a pocket piece cut to 9 by 17, one towel holder cut to three by eight and I've custom designed these ones I'll have um, an image for you down below they're for the back part where we attach the grommet so I've attached some fusible interfacing on there just to give it extra support for the grommet you will also need two strips of webbing 72 inches long I'm going to be using some hemming, uh, washable hemming tape today just because I find it a lot easier to do the small quarter inch hems with this rather than trying to fiddle at the ironing board and burn my fingers. So this I'll also have a link in the description below to grab some of that because I do find it very very handy. You will need some grommets along with your standard sewing equipment of needles, rotary cutter, and a ruler. I like to prep my interfacing pieces first. So we're gonna start with our towel holder piece. So it is eight by three. And we're just gonna give this a quick iron. And then we're gonna fold it in half and iron it again. Then going to take a piece of fusible interfacing. I've cut this one seven inches long by one inch wide and we're going to tuck it in the middle. So we just folded it in half to create that crease so that we knew where our middle was so we would be able to line up this interfacing as close to the middle as possible. We're then going to fold it back onto itself so that our, interfa our interfacing is out, I guess, and our right sides are touching. And we'll give this a quick pin. This one's ready for the sewing machine. As I mentioned before, I have these custom pieces now. I have measured these from a, a sample that I had created. So I will have this pattern piece in the description below for you guys to print off. What I'm going to do with this one is a little bit different. I'm going to use my hemming tape and I'm going to run a bead along the furthest edge. I'm going to peel off the paper. So this is like a two-sided tape. It is uh, water soluble, so when you wash your garment, it will wash out, but it will hold everything in place just beautifully up until the point where it gets washed out. So I've folded it onto itself to create my very first fold. And then I'm gonna fold it over again, creating a nice clean quarter inch seen on this piece. So this one we're not going to want to do anything with it at this point. It is done just the way it is. You'll repeat these same steps on the other piece as well. We're then going to take our pocket piece and we're going to do the same thing that we did for the towel holder piece. We're going to fold it in half to get our 
marking as far as where our midsection is. We're going to line up our fusible interfacing with that half. And then we're just going to glue it down. This one as well, you're going to want to fold it back over onto itself so that right sides are touching and pin it along the three sides. So these two pieces are now ready to take over to the sewing machine and what we're going to do is use a half inch seam allowance and go around the three sides making sure that we leave a hole for turning on either piece. So I've gotten these two sewn and I've left my spot for turning. And what we're going to do now is trim our corners. So you're going to want to give it a pretty good trim. And I always do a little extra on the sides. just to make sure that it doesn't bulk up my corners too bad. And then turn her inside out. So once you've got your corners nicely pushed out, you're just going to take it to your ironing board and you're going to iron it flat. Our last step to do with this piece is to top stitch all the way around. Before I do that though, I'm going to turn this one. There you go. And this one as well, take it back to the to your ironing board. Make sure that you're ironing all your seams nice and nice and flat so that when once we apply it to the front of the apron that there are no creases or lumps or bumps. For this one, when we take it over to the sewing machine, we're going to want to do just a double, two lines of stitching here just to hold the top of the pocket. We'll worry about the other three sides when we apply it to the front of the apron. We're gonna switch gears and we're now going to work with our front panel piece. So I've cut mine so that the stripes are running top to bottom. What we're going to want to do with this is fold it in half so that our length is running top to bottom. We're going to take our armhole piece that we got from the website and we're going to place it in the top corner. Now you're on a standard pattern, you do, usually do this on the fold, but this is going to be the center of our apron. So what we're gonna to want to do is cut this, this time on our open end. So place the long side on the long side, the short side across the top. And then just cut it out. These pieces you've cut out are scraps, so you can just set them aside and use them for another project. You'll also notice that there is this rectangular piece. Now, I've used this from another pattern, but I will give you the dimensions of the square so that you can get a piece of fabric. And it's just to add a little strength here to the top of the apron so that when we add our grommets, that the grommets have something to hold on to. So I've pre-cut a piece of fusible interfacing that I'm going to stick up here to the inside of the apron. And then I'm going to cut another piece the same, roughly the same size to be a backing up here so that we hide our, in, our fusible interfacing. So I'm just gonna get this ironed on. So this is the rectangle that needs to go onto the opposite side of our main apron, but we have to do the same thing as we did to the little triangles. So we're going to take one side and we're going to apply our good old hemming tape. This just helps us to get the perfect quarter inch seam allowance or 
hem down here without having to burn our fingers at the iron. So just fold it over so that we're just encasing the, the hemming tape and then we're going to roll it over again and iron it down. We're just going to leave this like this for now and we're going to take the front of our apron. So now our fusible interfacing is facing down. We have the right side facing us and we're going to put the side opposite to the hem that we just created. So we want to enclose that hem. We're going to put right sides together. Now your rectangular piece will be a little bit bigger than the your top of your apron and that's okay. What we will do is just trim it to the exact size of the apron after we have it sewn in. So we're going to sew this in with a half inch seam allowance. Here is where I differ from many other patterns. This original pattern that I had found this upper piece asked us to trim it and flip it and iron it and then do these seams on the arm holes. But I found that quite difficult to do, to get our hem tucked up underneath this joint that we just created. So what I'm going to suggest is that you take your hemming tape, or if you don't have hemming tape, create your first quarter inch hem, and then trim and turn. This will just help you get through that corner without burning your fingers or cursing at your fabric because you just can't get it. All right, so I've gotten these two down. So now we're gonna get to trimming. Oh, there we are. We're gonna get to trim these, these two corners. You're also going to want to trim the little piece of the backing here that's sticking out down to about a quarter of an inch. Otherwise it'll show when you flip it. Hey. This is also the point that if your, if your backing piece was like excessively long compared to your front, then you'll want to trim that as well. So here we go. We're going to turn it up. And you're going to want to take this over to your iron and just roll out your seams, make sure that they're nice and even and give it a good press. At this point you'll notice too that your first hem that here that fold over that you created is, is trying to roll over and do its second fold. I would go ahead and iron those as well. Do the two side seams the same way that we did the arm seam. So hemming tape first, fold over, fold it over again and crease it. I'll get mine done and then I'll meet you back here. So my side seams are all done. Now I've opened them back up and I've grabbed the two triangular pieces that we created earlier. What I'm going to want to do, you'll notice that there's one flat side and then there's like one curved side. The curve goes up the armhole and you're going to want to make sure that your interfacing side is down. So this one we're just tucking into the seam. So we're going to tuck it underneath and then we're going to do our last fold over right over top, encasing those raw edges into our seam. Do the same thing on the other side. So we're just going to open them up, tuck it up underneath, and then roll them back down. So usually you would attach your waist string at this point, but because we're using the grommets, they need a little extra oomph to hold on to. So that's what we're creating here. It's just that extra layer so that the grommets have something to hold on to. What we can do now is head on over to our sewing machine and with a top stitch, stitch this down all the way around. Now I use about a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to try and want to get as far over on this quarter inch seam that we've created as possible without going over. So while we're here at the sewing machine, 
we're going to take our corners and we're going to stitch kind of blending in from this seam down across and then blend into this seam. We're going to do that on both sides and then we're going to do the same thing across the top. So this is where we had put that extra flap. We're going to go across the bottom, same seam allowance, and then we're going to do a secondary stitch across. So there'll be like a two stitch lines across this one. Okay, two corners and the top. All right, we are so close to being done. We have one last hem to do and that is across the, the bottom. And that one's going to be a little bit different. Starts out the same. We're gonna do our quarter inch hemming tape. And then we're gonna want a little bit wider hem on the bottom just to give it a little bit of definition and a little bit of style. So from here, I'm gonna use my other favorite trick. I want a one inch hem. So I'm going to actually draw a line two inches from our fold, the bottom of the fold here. Then I'm going to find my dressmaker's chalk. I'm actually gonna use red today because I think it'll blend in well better with the pink. And I'm gonna draw a line here at two inches all the way across. That way when I take it to my iron, I don't have to measure the whole way across. I can just fold it up to my line, press it, and I know that this finished hem will be one inch. I now have a beautiful one inch hem. We're gonna give it just a gentle pin, and then we're going to top stitch it in place like we did our sides. Welcome to the floor here at So Many Things, where we are going to work on our grommets. So I take one of the grommets and I just place it in the corner where I want it. It's just one under, hiding underneath. And then I'll use my water soluble marker or a pen and I'll just trace the circle on the inside of that grommet from the back, which will give me my placement circle and I know what area to cut out. So I'll do this in all four locations. Now I'm not measuring here, but if you do want them exactly the same, then go ahead and measure. Now to install these grommets, I will have to remove the center of this circle. So I'm just going to cut it out following my line that I've just drawn. I'm going to do all four, and then I'll get to installing the grommets. So you've got your hole cut out. Now you can put in your grommet piece, making sure that the, the neck of the grommet is facing to the back and you've got your nice finished front on the front. They come with these little tiny like washers that goes on the back. Your grommet kit should have also come with what looks like a, a big thick washer. That is the base plate. So you're gonna put your good side of your grommet down on that. And then it's gonna come with this little plunger that goes onto the long neck on the other side and then hammer away. All set. Let's do the other three. Our last step is to prep and install our webbing. So I do like to finish one edge. So I'm going to use my handy dandy tape again and I'm going to roll it over my quarter inch and I actually cut it a little bit long so that once I've got it folded over the first time I can tuck these ends back in and fold it over again so that I have a nice little double fold and I'm not worried about that end fraying on me. I'm going to do the same thing on this other strap. Now yes I am only finishing one end. The intent on this is to do like a, a messy knot look on the top grommets here coming out the front. So a little fray on that would be okay. 
So again, fold it over the first time. Tuck your hemming tape ends in and roll it over again. Give these a quick little zigzag on your sewing machine so that you know that they won't come undone. And then we can thread them into our apron. So I always seem to get this part wrong. But let's see how I do this time. So I'm gonna lay my tape across and then I'm going to come insert my tape into the right side or the front side of my hip piece and then I'm going to go up to the opposite grommet and I'm going to go in through the back and out through the front and then this is where I will tie my knot doesn't have to be perfect remember we want it to be a little bit messy do the same opposite I guess to this side in through the front in through the back on the opposite side knot I'm trying to get it to like sit on top of each other so that it gives me a nice big knot that way they kind of poke out the front once you've got those threaded through, your apron is done. I hope you've enjoyed sewing these aprons with me today. They're such a fun project to make, and I've even made one for my daughter, so we can match while we're in the kitchen. As always, please like, subscribe, and press that bell button to receive notifications of new videos. Also, check out my Facebook page for lots of other great content. Thanks for sewing with me.